Hey everyone and welcome to a brand new type of video in UE4. This video series is all about game art, okay? So it's slightly different from a normal uh, weekly videos. These videos are more aligned to the snack size videos where we look at game art and more the materials and textures sort of functions that we can do and recreating some effects that we see in games uh, in their visual appearance, okay? So less about functionality and more about look, okay? And it may drift into uh, more functionality later but right now we're focused on materials textures and how we can use them to create different effects so for this very first introductory episode i thought we should go through the material editor how it works different options available to you and uh, how we can make it uh, apply to things in game so in a game we have two different types of uh, things to keep in mind we have textures textures sorry and materials now texture maps or textures are simply just simple um, 2d images that we apply to an object but we can't apply them directly to an object in at least in new e4 instead we use a material now a material is a collection of multiple texture maps to create an overall effect so you may have a texture map which is dealing with color and you may have another one that deals with specular or the shininess or something these texture maps combine together into a material. So, let's look at the material editor and textures separately. So I'm going to import a texture into my game. Uh, bear with me for my messy, messy desktop. So here's a texture. I'm just going to rename it here. So we've got dirt texture. And textures come up with this red underline, okay? That's how we know it's a texture. And if we hover over it, you can see in the brackets after the name, texture. So textures, if we double click and open it, as you can see, it's just a 2D image, okay? And up here we have the details of this image. Uh, I'll just download this off the internet, nothing special. Um, but you can see uh, different stats about it, different various settings we have available to it. We're not going to go through all of these in massive detail today. Um, we will get to them though at some point. Now, a texture is displayed in four different channels. Red, green, blue, and alpha. So if I were to turn off the green and blue and alpha, this is just the red data. The red data, as you can see, is not in red. It's actually in black and white. White indicates one, black indicates zero. So the closer it is to white, the more red is in that pixel. Okay. And if I look at green, I can see the green levels in there and blue and alpha now this is a completely opaque texture therefore none of it is see-through hence why it's all white white being one black being zero and it's a combination of these three color settings that determines what color pixel should be but how does that work well let's have a look at it so we've got red and green and blue uh, primarily here we're focusing on and they only work in black and white well, it's how computers work with colours. We have different channels, so red, green and blue channels. Each one can hold 256 different combinations, okay? 256 different uh, numbers. Numbers? Uh, data values, sorry. And a colour is made up of a red value, a green value and a blue value. And when we combine all three, they give us a different value, okay? So each pixel has a different value of each channel. This is why I have hexadecimal, so two decimals per uh, channel here. And it's why we uh, work with 8-bit uh, um, color values. 256 is 8-bit. Eight so that's how texture works, essentially. And I'm going to close that. We're done with that. The next thing we're going to do is open up the material editor and give a little walkthrough of that and how it works. So I'm going to right-click here and go add new material and I'm going to call this a dirt underscore material and you can tell materials are different from textures because of two things first of all they've got a green underline and they are represented on a sphere okay so this is the material editor we on the left have a viewport down the bottom of the details on the right we have the various different uh, nodes and we can place into our blueprint and in the middle we have the blueprint itself now one constant about all materials is that this output box this output node 
takes different values into base color, metallic, and so forth, so forth, and spit out a result over here. So let's go through these various options. So base color, these are just basic textures and basic colors that we may put into it. So for example, I can right click and type in vector and get a vector uh, constant, sorry, constant three vector. And we want a three vector because R, G, B. So each of those values represents red, green, blue. And we can plug that into base color. I can choose the details then of this color to be whatever I like. By clicking on a node and the details panel, opening it up and changing the red value up. And you can see the red now appears on the sphere. Green, and blue. Okay. So you can tweak those numbers however you like. If you want to get white, you put one in every single channel. Red, green, and blue light make up white. Okay, and black is obviously zero, zero, zero. So that's how we work with base color. Metallic is simply how metallic an object will look. It sounds really stupid to say, but it's basically the way light reacts when it hits that surface. Okay, uh, specular is how shiny part of that uh, texture looks and roughness is how much light is uh, reflected and bounced off of it um, so the rougher it is the less light is bounced off and more absorbed into the material and emissive color is how much light is emitted from it alongside these five we also have others below here some are grayed out and some aren't this is because of the type of material we've currently working on so this is what we call an opaque material meaning that opacity and opacity mask aren't used. Opaque meaning that you can't see through it at all. Okay, the whole thing is solid. So opacity deals with how see-through it is, and that can be a value between zero and one. Opacity mask though is a mask, meaning that you can only have values between one or zero. They can be only one or the other. They can't be 0.5 or anything like that. So to make these two usable, we have to change the setting of this material. So the material itself, we change the blend mode in the details panel. So the moment it says opaque, we can change that to masked, and you can see a passy mask turns up. Then I can change it to translucent, and you can see the other one appears. Because translucent means we can see through it at various different alphas. I'm going to put it back to opaque for now. A normal map changes how light reacts to the surface so you can basically fake detail onto a material um, we'll cover these at a later date uh, world position offset so if you want the vertices to move or change the location we can actually do that in material as well so it changes where it renders the uh, vertices so it's quite a clever way to make things move so if you want to do water for example this is how we do it inside world position offset and we go down we can see there's loads more going on here um, these aren't used too much, we'll come to these later and when you're doing more advanced materials but for right now this top half is one you'll be using the most. So how do we actually make the material? So as I said a material is a collection of textures and each one of these can be a texture. Base colour will be a texture colour. So we can right click in here and type in texture sample and it's going to sample a texture of our choosing. We can click on it and choose a texture from the drop down box in the details there's my dirt texture and I can plug that straight into base colour now the texture sample will have these five pins and you'll see this appear on multiple nodes but texture sample is definitely where you'll see it the most and these are what you think they are so red refers to the red channel green refers to the green channel blue blue channel and this last one is the alpha the top one is the combination of all of these into one texture so UVs refer to the coordinates of the texture we want to render. Um, so if we want to render just a part of it, we can change it using this UV here. And the texture bit here is if we want a texture object, which is another node we'll come to later, we can plug it into there and break the texture object down into its various channels. But we don't have to do that, worry about that right now. So alongside that, we may want to change its metallic and its specular. Now, dirt isn't very shiny, so let's change the specular. So from here, I can just type in a constant value which is just a number, and at the moment it defaults to zero. And you can see the shininess goes away completely. Yeah. If I change up to one, 
to become shiny again. Likewise, if I want to make it metallic, I can then take metallic here and do constant at zero, not metallic. So it looks like plastic, basically shiny plastic. And one will make it nice and shiny, okay, like a metallic ball. Okay, so that's how metallic setting works. And the roughness basically tells it how much light is refracted. So if it's not rough at all, you can see it becomes almost like a mirror. But if I change it to one, you can see it turns it all off completely. You don't get no reflection on it whatsoever. Being a metallic object, the roughness will basically negate what's happening with the metallic object. So you won't, you'll lose that metallicness of it. If I want it to emit, I can put in a color here. So I can go constant three vector, give it a color to emit. So here we can type in uh, one for red, and you can see now it emits a red light. I can change it down to whatever value I like. Like so. Okay. So it's important to note that these don't have to be values. They can also be textures themselves. Remember, a texture is just data about each pixel being either 0 or 1 and various in-betweens. So if you only want some parts of it to be metallic or some parts of it to be specular, you just have a texture map with the bits you want to be specular or metallic in white and everything else in black. And you just plug that into there and it'll make those parts in particular black uh, uh, metallic or shiny and that will do it uh, for today uh, we won't go into too much detail this is just a first introduction to materials and how they work and hopefully I've explained as best I can uh, how some of these settings work and that you didn't know before maybe you learned a little bit something okay so in the future we'll get into more detailed uh, game art tricks and tips that games use um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you like this type of video and like to see more of it. So um, leave a comment below if you want to see in particular regarding game art. And um, yeah, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and support me on Patreon if you have done so. Thank you very much and goodbye.